Good morning. I am from Wooden Panel once again with another video interview. This time with me, Mr. Shrink from Lauco. He is the managing director. Good morning, Mr. Shrink. How are you? Good morning, Mr. Gosha. Thank you very much for asking. I'm fine. As we know, we are stuck up in the pandemic, COVID-19, and it's having a catastrophic effect on economy globally, on the business. How, how do you see the current phase of European woodworking industry? I mean, from our point of view, we see the European woodworking industry right now on a path to recovery. So there are improvements in almost all the European markets. These improvements are moderate, but steadily. We're happy to say that all states and regions are back from the lockdown phase. And so are almost all of our customers. Although you have to admit also some customers have disappeared already due to the Corona situation. But all in all, we also have to say that the situation remains fragile. Right now, infection rates are increasing again within Europe, or at least within most of the countries. So everybody is still a bit nervous and there is always a risk of probably some local lockdowns or other safety procedures which again can have a negative impact on our business. So right. careful optimism, I would say. Right, as, as we know, Lyco is a global player and pioneer in the cutting wood, uh, cutting tools in the technology. For like any manufacturing business, you have also a really big warehouse in all over the world and uh, that you try to support the supply chain. But this pandemic really is a big hit for supply chain. So how will yeah. you address that situation, that challenge? I mean, to be perfectly honest, so far we did not have very big or dramatic problems with our supply chain. At least so far, you never know what will happen. Obviously, in the first stage of, of the corona pandemic, we did have some issues, but all of them could be solved within a short period of time. And we also have to say, everybody, or a lot of people are talking about the problems with uh, Chinese supplies or Asian supplies, because that's where the, the Corona pandemic started. Our experience is or was that uh, the European side of supplies had bigger problems than, for example, the Chinese or Southeast Asian ones. But like I said, all of them could be solved within a very short period. So knock on wood, it will stay like this. And of course, we have a, a risk management within our supply chain management, but we also have to say our branch is very specific, our tooling wood in branch within woodworking industry, and there is only a, a limited amount of supplier who can supply you with a, a good quality and also on a worldwide scheme. And we always consider our suppliers as a partnership or as, and we want to be fair with them and you don't just stop the cooperation because of a, a situation like this where nobody can be blamed for. Right, right. So it's also our target to be a loyal partner for our, that, for that's our suppliers. Great. That's great. That really helped to, you know, uh, sit, uh, cope up this situation in the global pandemic situation. Uh, Mr. Strang, my next question would be, uh, you recently Lyoko, celebrated the 10 years anniversary of P-System tools. So what are the new uh, development about uh, and the features? And if I can ask the second part also, what are the dynamic advantage you offer through uh, G5 saw blades? The copy system is, a, in my point of view, a perfect example of how we create, produce and sell more than just a, a physical piece of tool, a physical piece of metal, but more a solution that helps our customers to improve their processes and their production. We started 10 years ago with the P-System tooling, and we started with trimming blocks, for example, for edge bending machines, and with straight shank type cutters for the CNC working centers. But over these 10 years now, we added hogging systems, we added flooring tools, we added groovers, we added uh, profile tools. So, but they all have in common that there is a very specific, a very gliding way the tooth enters the cutting material, the tooth cuts the fiber orientation and the way then it creates a chip. And this is what they all have in common. And this is in the end, let's say the secret behind the, 
an excellent performance and also an excellent cutting quality. And if you understand this mechanical and dynamic principle, you understand the sake of it. And also from the G5's saw blade side, it's a, it's a completely different product, but a, a similar proge procedure. We started with table saws and the deciding thing with this alternate top bevel, two groups of ATB and then one flat to give a guidance. It is a very aggressive tool, but it, and it gives you a perfect finish. And also there, we started with table saws. We moved then on to clipping saws, chopping and mitre saws. Then we went on the CNC machinery as a universal saw for all kinds of applications. And, we, and then we added groovers. And nowadays, you have these, like you mentioned already, on a hand dagger with diameter 800 on the joinery machine. And when you go next door to the, uh, to the office furniture, you see it on a grooving tool diameter 100 on a BHX from, from Brand, for example. So you see the whole range of physical dimensions and applications, but they all have, again, in common, a very aggressive um, tooth geometry, very low cutting pressure, and therefore the, the good results. Which of the other region uh, successful, where you have huge demand for this system, beside uh, Germany, Austria? I mean, the P system is really, is been uh, sold already worldwide. I would say the biggest market is not even, uh, is not only Germany, but for example, Japan, where you do, you do have a lot of paper-based materials, is a, one of our most successful uh, markets for P system tooling. But then again, Italy with all the, the, the market leaders in furniture and the supply chain for the furniture industry, Mentioning is the uh, Germany is the obvious thing. We do have a lot of uh, pieces in running in Poland, which is one of the big, biggest uh, furniture markets within Europe. We use it in the US, so there is there is no region anymore we, we, where we do not use P system. So I'm sure wherever they focus on a good quality and and, and a good performance, and where they, where they do it on an industrial base, it is a good option. So I feel the, the, the Asian hub for the manufacturing for furniture is Malaysia, Vietnam. They also must be using this system as well. Yep, correct. So we do have, for example, in Malaysia, we do have furniture clients, but we also use it, for example, uh, in a three layer parquet manufacturing, the P system. So it's not only a furniture thing, we have it in flooring, we have it in the door manufacturing. So it's a wide range of processes. Right, interesting. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Schreng, as I, I personally advocate uh, B2, uh, B2B meetings, you know, in physical form, which is give a better sense of understanding each other. But due to this pandemic, uh, it is obviously not possible, you know. And we are, like today, we are doing more and more meetings, internal, external, from the digital technology. And so this situation, everybody should adopt the digital technology, you know, during the crisis and in general. So what, yeah. do you, what do you place yourself when it comes to digital technology? I mean, how can I say? We use the digital technology not for the sake of for itself. We always aim for creating a benefit for our customers or for ourselves as a company, and then we will use it. Currently, we are focusing on uh, the, the topic of a digital twin as a standard process for our tools. Why are we doing this? Because we think uh, the digital twin is the basis and the necessary precondition for all kinds of intelligent interactive processes between machine on the one hand side, tooling, and also the, the user of the machine on the other side. And it's also, let's say, the basis for process improvement for our customers. We can use it for smart data analysis. We also uh, use it for the serialization of, of our tools and we use it for the predictive maintenance and for the quality uh, control for our customers. Well, so this, this is what we, what we are using, this the topic of the digital twin. Besides that, we have widened our presses, presence on specific platforms like Nextmark, like Tapio. And we are also right now at the stage of implementing our fully automized e-commerce channel. For more than 45 years, as I read, Lauco has produced saw blades in Mainheim in, uh, in France. So yep. in February, you proceeded uh, with the expansion of the project. 
and in January you have also started the groundbreaking for the new service center center there. So what is the current situation about this expansion project? I mean, in, in France, in Bernheim, where our local production France for Sawblade is based, we have added a complete new building to our existing uh, production plant. We are in, the, in a good situation that we know already that we will increase our business with Sawblades consider considerably within the next years. So it was an essential and necessary just result from this development that we had to build up or to bring in a new building. And that gives us the opportunity to, of course, to increase our volumes, but also to uh, optimize and strengthen our product productivity and optimize the material flow. So that's what we are doing in Beinheim. And we are happy to say that this building is already finished. So right now we are bringing the machinery and all the, the infrastructure into service and starting the production over there within, let's say, fall this year. What did we do here in Germany in Horb at the headquarter? Here we have built up a completely new service center right next to our production site. And again, this will help us to improve our processes. It will obviously create synergies for us and it will also help us to, to use our human resources at its full potential. So it's two big building projects within a difficult year 2020, but we are very happy that we can do this and we are convinced it's also the right timing and the right decision, even in a year like this. Right, so I see 2020 is not actually bad for Loico. Well, uh, indeed in 2020, we are using more digital technology in terms of our daily business, our meetings. So are you planning any digital workshop for your clients in near future? I mean, having built up a well-known international brand over decades is, is a benefit. But of course, we have to, re to react on this situation and we can rely just on continuing like we were used to it before. So we are using right now all kinds of uh, formats to get in touch with our people all over the world, with our partners, but of course also with our, uh, with our customers. And we use all technology available to keep the communication up and running. So we, we have used web trainings, we are doing online tutorials with our customers. We have tried all kinds of formats. I have to say we are still in a learning phase. Things are working fine and we extend them and we strengthen these things and wherever we see, see there is a lack of efficiency, we try something else. So like I said, we are in a learning phase, but we, I think we did quite well. We made good experiences, but also speaking very frankly, we will be more than happy when we can welcome our guests and our customers again on a normal way on the next exhibition without thinking about any health and safety measures and just taking care of the person standing right in front of us. Right. And as you said, next exhibition, I clearly can mention now Ligna 2021. So that would be, of course, that is the biggest show, but there are other shows to start with. Uh, so, Mr. Schwenk, what do you expect uh, the growth in the coming year? I mean, the outlook is always difficult, but after a year like we have it right now, it's, it's, it's getting even more, or oh, it's, it's even harder to say. But we, like you said before, we are still optimistic, but at the same time, we also are sure that even in 2021, there will be corona effects, there will be effects from the pandemic. We think we can recover from what we have lost within 2020. We will also have some catch-up effects. There's things that we are already facing right now, but this will continue over the next couple of months. But it will still be a difficult year for the woodworking branch as a whole. People are earning less, so the consumption will be reduced on a worldwide basis. We also don't know about uh, the negative effects of, of all the debts that are increasing dramatically during the last couple of months and this will continue. So I think overall the, our market will not be growing and even more it's important then for us to do a proper job to take care about our customers and of course it's our target to gain some market share. So we are trying to get back on the, on the original level like we have been in 2019 
and we, we do our best to fulfill these targets. And we also have some positive uh, things what we can link to it, we, we have started this year now in, in Vietnam with a new daughter company, Loico Vietnam. So we made up a service center there. This will help us to, to gain more market share in Vietnam, which is a very interesting and emerging market for us. So this will help us to grow. And at the same time, we are always looking for new branches. We started a few years ago with a uh, cutting composite materials like uh, glass fiber reinforced or carbon fiber reinforced materials. This is now getting more and more widespread also on a worldwide base. And these are, for example, markets where we also think we can gain market share and where, where we can add additional business to our range. Right, Mr. Swank, as you said, we have to be hopeful that uh, things will be better and 2021 will give us a better opportunity to business. Mr. Strang, thank you very much once again. Stay healthy, take care, and uh, thank you for talking to us once again. You take care too, stay safe and healthy, and thank you very much, Mr. Gosha.